Jumping over and talking about the Saints and the Lions, a higher over and under on the week should be a very good high scoring game. We saw the Lions put, get up their first win against the high scoring Cardinals last week, coming off the backs of three interceptions by Kyler Murray, whereas uh, Drew Brees and the Saints lost their second consecutive game to the Packers. Uh, well, they didn't lose two games to the Packers, but they lost their second consecutive game on the season, losing to the Packers on Sunday night. And that was in the Superdome. This is on the road. Looks like Michael Thomas will be back. So this should be a pretty fun game to watch. We've got both Kenny Galladay and Michael Thomas returning. And, you know, we've got a 54.5 over under. I believe that is the highest on the week. If not, I'm sorry, take that back. Second highest on the week, at least in the early games. So very high over under, expecting this to be one of the more profitable games for fantasy football purposes. Saints are slated to win this one by four. And, you know, based on what we've seen, this defense has not been nearly as disruptive as we've seen in the past couple years. They're giving up the six most points to quarterbacks. They've been good at slowing down the running backs and the wide receivers. There's 19th against the run and 27th against the receivers. But where the Saints have really struggled has been against the tight end. We saw Darren Waller absolutely torch them in week two. We saw OJ Howard score a touchdown in week one. We saw Robert Tanyan and Jay Sternberger do some work against them. And Mercedes Lewis scored a touchdown against the Saints in week three for the Packers. So without Devontae Adams, the Packers pivoted to the tight ends and followed suit with what the Raiders showed us they could do with Darren Waller. So the Saints defense needs to tighten up against the tight end. With that being said, based on the information we have, it looks like this is going to be a smash TJ Hawkinson week, especially for DFS. On the Lions side, the Lions are giving up the seventh most, seventh most points to quarterbacks and running backs, 11th most points to wide receivers. They've been a little tighter against the tight end. We're also dealing with a injury to Jared Cook. Looks like he's going to play. Not sure if he'll be limited at all. So, of course, you're starting Alvin Kamara. You don't need me to tell you that. I think Breeze is an okay start in this game. Just based on the over-under, based on what we're expecting this to be, yes, Bree's arm looks like a noodle out there. His average depth of target has dropped multiple yards, even after being like 31st or 32nd for multiple years in a row. Now it's like so far and clear the lowest in the NFL. It's, it's beginning to get concerning, but that being said, Alvin Kamara has been able to make up for it with the amount of receptions he's been getting and how elusive he is in open field. And if Michael Thomas is back, even if he's somewhat hobbled, I still think Drew Brees can have a pretty good game in this one. I'm nervous about starting any other option here. Maybe Trey Quan Smith, maybe Emmanuel Sanders if you are in desperate need. One of those guys likely to score a touchdown, but who do you pick between them? We saw Trey Quan Smith have a decent game in week two, and then Miles Sanders rebounded and had the touchdown in week three. So it's kind of a guess at this point. Jared Cook, as we mentioned, dealing with an injury may not even go this week. Haven't really seen the practice reports for him yet. We'll have to monitor that going into the week, but the Lions are a little bit stronger against tight ends. I would probably try to uh, find a better option if you have one. Uh, and I'm probably going to try to avoid playing the Saints defense until they show us that they actually still have that same shutdown potential that they've had in years past. On the Lions side, we saw Matt Stafford look a lot better with Kenny Galladay. Now, Kenny Galladay most likely to be shadowed by Marshawn Lattimore. But after we saw Alan Lazard go off against this defense, I'm not sure that we can really count on the Saints defense being that shutdown team that we've seen in the past. So Kenny Galladay, maybe you have to lower him in your ranking slightly, but I think you're still starting him. Marvin Jones, still a good start in this one. And then as we mentioned, Saints are the worst team in terms of uh, you know slowing down the tight end. So TJ Hawkinson is a smash play. Hopefully they don't pull more shenanigans and bring Jesse James out for, for red zone targets again. That was absolutely just, it makes no sense, but Hopefully TJ Hawkinson sees those targets this week. I'm not going to play Jesse James by any means, but I think TJ Hawkinson has a really good game in this one. We're not touching any of the running backs here. And the Saints run defense has at least been a little bit better than their past defense thus far through the season. And, you know, with Adrian Peterson getting the majority of the looks, but DeAndre Swift getting the majority of the passing game looks, I mean, there's just, it's a bad situation to start running backs because at any point, Kerry and Johnson could end up getting a goal line carry. So you really don't know who's, who's going to start each week in and out. So the Lions and Ravens, very similar situation right now, avoiding that running back situation like the plague. Danny Amendola, I mean, if you're in an absolute desperate situation, he's continuing to get targets. But you know, last week he got the first catch of the day and then didn't see anything for the rest of the day other than a, a missed red zone target. So 
not looking forward to that and not playing the Lions defense either. But I think this will be a game that the Saints get right. The Saints should win this one pretty decisively. I have them winning by seven. Saints 28 to Lions 21. 